Welcome to my Marilyn Monroe mukbang. I'm going to link a video below where I ate exactly like Marilyn Monroe accurately for a week. So at the end of it, here's my mukbang. So Marilyn Monroe would indulge in food that was higher calorie at the end of the week, especially if she was going out to dinner. So what I did for this Marilyn Monroe mukbang was recreate her first date with Joe DiMaggio. And Joe DiMaggio was a baseball player. He was huge in America and they were actually married for a little bit less than a year, but he continued to be a pivotal romantic partner in her life for the rest of the decade until Marilyn died. So essentially, I'm going to be summarizing the last week I just did while eating like Marilyn Monroe, but I'm also gonna tell you about Joe DiMaggio and Marilyn Monroe's first date while I do this mukbang. Before I move forward with this mukbang, I just want you guys to know that none of this food is going to waste. Nothing is being thrown out. I also made an anonymous donation to the Ohalone tribe, which is the original first peoples of the land that I'm currently on right now. I'm going to link in the description below where you can follow that link to make a donation. I was actually able to locate an original 1950s menu from that restaurant before it changed into what is now like the Rainbow Grill or something like that on Hollywood Boulevard. I'm gonna start with the ravioli because I really I want to try these. Um, this has truffle sauce in it, truffle mushrooms, ricotta, high spinach. Okay, so Marilyn Monroe and Joe DiMaggio's first date. So I've heard conflicting stories about why Marilyn Monroe was at the Villanova restaurant. Wait, Laura. Oh my god, absolutely. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh my god, hi. Mm hmm. I'm like going Nikocado avocado, but like vintage. Okay. Um, mm, 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 mm. gotta get some of the bread. Okay. The Villanova restaurant was on Hollywood Boulevard and everybody went there. Judy Garland got engaged to um, Vincent Minnelli there. Mickey Rooney would go there all the time. Later when it was called the Rainbow Grill, it was like John Belushi and all these people. Um, Clark Gable, Ava Gardner. I mean, like everybody went there. It was this Italian restaurant that was like slightly Americanized. Oh my God, this cheese and garlic. And Marilyn Monroe was actually set up on a blind date with Joe DiMaggio. But, oh my God, the amount of butter in here. That's the morning. Okay. So Marilyn Monroe was set up on a blind date with Joe DiMaggio, but the current owners of the restaurant and other people say that she was actually on a date with Mickey Rooney and then that she ran into Joe DiMaggio and left with him and Mickey Rooney was mad. That's not true. I looked up newspaper archive stuff, um, interviews with like Joe DiMaggio's like close friends and publicists. I don't think the Mickey Rooney thing is true at all. I also just do not see Mickey Rooney and Marilyn. Also, Mickey Rooney was like pushing 40 then, right? In the 50s? I don't think so. So, it, they would never work out. But anyway, Joe DiMaggio was interested in Marilyn Monroe because she was one of the bigger, you know, she was one of the bigger um, names and like, it was 1952 and everybody was like, oh my God, Marilyn Monroe is the beginning of her fame. So essentially, Joe DiMaggio was talking to his like publicist. Mm garlic knots dipped it in some spaghetti sauce okay so joe dimaggio's publicist was talking to him and saying he was trying to get like marilyn for something or like trying to like book her for something i don't know like something like that and joe dimaggio was like would you set up set us up on a blind date and they were like okay so they called marilyn and marilyn was kind of like you know, she had had some issues with like love and she had, um, she was in basically like a, a, a dry spell for like dating and stuff like that. So they said, hey, there's this guy named Joe DiMaggio, blah, 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 blah. Of course she knew who he was because Joe DiMaggio was like one of the biggest baseball players ever. So she was like, okay, sure, I'll go on a blind date with him. And she shows up to the date. Apparently she was 30 minutes late, but she comes in and it's like, va, va, boom, hi, Marilyn. And so, wait, oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. Okay, so they're like, she comes 30 minutes late and to the date, but they hit it off really well that first night. So I do know that they had spaghetti with meatballs as their first meal they shared in this little corner booth, the Villa Nova restaurant. I know that they had a little bit more. They definitely had red wine. Um, they definitely coursed it out. They um, And then 
I think Joe DiMaggio ended up driving her home. And then he said to her that he would call her and that he needed to like go to the airport or something and that he needs like a ride for something, but he would call her. And then the next day, Marilyn called her friend who set them up and was like, I don't think he's that interested in me. He hasn't called you. And they're like, he will, he will. So this is early 1952. They actually ended up getting married in San Francisco, January 1954. So about two years after they had met, they ended up getting married. So when Marilyn married Joe DiMaggio, she had to tell the, um, she had to tell the studios that she was getting married. It was in her contract. Like if she got married, she had to tell them ahead of time. So what she did is she called them like 15 minutes before they were at, um, 15 minutes before they were at the public hall or whatever in San Francisco. And 15 minutes was enough time to get all of these paparazzi and people like waiting like a zoo when they showed up. Like she did not expect it. But she told the studios like right before they did it because she didn't want them to object or freak out or change her brand or control her or anything like that. And so she was kind of like getting around like that ridiculous part of her contract. So Marilyn and Joe DiMaggio actually ended up hanging out in San Francisco a lot because his family lived in North Beach and the North Beach area of San Francisco is super Italian and Joe DiMaggio was like Sicilian Italian. His parents were immigrants. So Joe DiMaggio and Marilyn Monroe hung out in San Francisco a lot and they actually would do normal stuff. They would like go fishing. She'd hang out with his big family. She had learned to cook with his mom, just a lot of family stuff. And Marilyn really fell in love with that because she never had a close family like that ever. She never had siblings. She never had a, she didn't even know her dad. Sorry, the barada is so good. I mean, like, she didn't even know her dad, barada. Um, okay, so San Francisco, blah, blah. They get married in San Francisco. And then the marriage, I think, lasted only like 250 days. I think she pulled, it was kind of like a Britney Spears like situation, Kevin Federline, you know, where basically they got married and they were totally in love with each other, but Joe DiMaggio was retired and she was at the beginning of her career. She had like just become Marilyn Monroe. And so he didn't really like that she was out, you know, filming on set and like gone all the time. And on top of that, she was, um, the seven year itch came out right when they were, had just gotten married. And you know, that famous Marilyn Monroe thing where she's like, oh my gosh, and the wind is blowing up her skirt. Well, basically that happened and it was in the press everywhere. And you have to think back to like 1954, 55. That is very scandalous. I mean, it was like, you know, like her full on underwear and it's just super suggestive. And she's like, oh my gosh, in the wind. And so Joe DiMaggio got extremely possessive and he was extremely insecure about their relationship and about, you know, if he, she would like cheat on him and like infidelity. So there ended up being a lot of issues in, in the home life. They actually were fighting all the time. They were separated all the time. And Marilyn Monroe ended up divorcing him. And she actually stated in her divorce that it was due to emotional abuse. So it sounds to me like he was emotionally abusive and he probably, if not, maybe physically, I don't know if she ever really came forward and talked about that, but either way, the marriage didn't even last a year. It went from honeymoon in love. Like she was leaving city hall being like, we're going to have six kids. And he's like, that sounds swell, honey. And like, so in love, perfect, happily ever after to less than a year together. She ends up not being with him anymore and she's seeing other people. And of course he knows that and okay, the broth is nice. Definitely going to have some of this cheese action over my meat the ball. I'm so sorry. So much do it. Okay. You know, it's not giving me the raclette like melting action I was expecting. So he's always orbiting her basically and he was always like, hey, baby, you know, like, hey, blah, blah, blah. I don't know how he talked. But basically, he always wanted to get back together with her. And a lot of his friends said that he was taking things really, really poorly, that he just wasn't, you know, he just wasn't his normal self. And he wanted her back. And he was just like distraught. And he couldn't believe that she would go that far. I don't know. Who knows if Marilyn told him a million times, I'm going to leave you if you keep doing this. But that's their personal life. So then um, she actually ends up meeting and marrying Arthur Miller, the playwright, the author, um, and they had a relationship for a few years, but honestly it was pretty over before 
it was pretty over before the finalized divorce actually happened. Now, of course, they did love each other. And again, that was a great love of her life. And Joe DiMaggio, this was kind of like a knife in his back, but she said to the press that Arthur Miller is the only man she's only ever truly loved. So there's that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Joe DiMaggio is orbiting her despite the fact that she gets married again to Arthur Miller. I don't think Marilyn had an affair with Joe DiMaggio during her Arthur Miller days, but I definitely could be wrong. So then her divorce with Arthur Miller is finalized, which is a whole different YouTube episode on why that happened. Okay. So her divorce is finalized, but then she's running around with um, Frank Sinatra's pack. I don't really think her and Frank Sinatra had a sexual relationship, but I think she had a relationship with some of his like mafia pack or for lack of a better word, like group of friends. <laughs> and Joe DiMaggio knew this. Then she started sleeping around with JFK. Oh, mm. oh my God. More power to you. President of the United States, JFK was pretty hot, but okay. Obviously, it's morally different story because he had a wife and kids, but so she was sleeping with JFK and Joe DiMaggio knew this and was like, no, we're going to get married. We're going to get married. And he was telling people and even telling the press like this is going to happen. OK, wait, I need a Carpaccio moment. So up until right before Marilyn Monroe died, uh, Joe DiMaggio was telling people they were going to get married, even though she was actively having a relationship with other people. However, her relationship with Joe DiMaggio was, um, oh my gosh, that's good. Her relationship with Joe DiMaggio was less, like after time it started becoming more of a platonic emotional thing where she was yo-yoing back to him because when she actually checked into a psych ward and they wouldn't let her out, Joe DiMaggio flew out there like immediately and was like, get her out. She like called him and was like, this is horrible. Like I'm, you know, especially back in the 1950s, um, it, she wasn't getting proper care and it was kind of, you know, like it was a really bad situation. He flew in, they wouldn't let her out. She was being like trapped in a room all day long, like tied down to a cot kind of situation. Joe DiMaggio flies in and he's like, you'll let her out. Oh my gosh. Of course, that's the 1950s. Like imagine if one of us gets 5015, like we could just be like, oh, my ex-boyfriend, my ex-husband's coming in to yell at you and let me out. Okay, 1950s. Like, oh, now that like the guys come to tell, tell us what to do, like we'll let her go. All right. Carpaccio and the garlic bread. Mm -hmm. Fast forward. This is right after JFK's birthday celebration, I believe 1963, for the Democratic Party. And she's saying, happy birthday, Mr. President. She was shooting something's got to give. She ends up getting fired from it. Rehired, which a lot of people don't know. She actually was looking forward to reshooting that. She had a lot of things in her future. She was not planning a suicide. And the last person she spoke to on the phone, I believe, was Joe DiMaggio. It was a phone call later at night before her body was found. It, he actually ended up, you know, sending flowers to her grave um, for years and years and years and years until he passed on. And he always had a sense of regret and guilt that if he had made sure the marriage worked out, that at that point they would have kids. And at that point, she would then not be dead. So he always had this like self guilt and self blame about Marilyn dying. Okay, I'm all, like, first of all, I've thrown out politeness and whatever illusion you might have of me of being like more refined is now thrown out the window. I don't know if this is tiramisu because they sent me the wrong thing, but here we go. Um, yeah, this is tiramisu. It's really nice quality chocolate. I like that the whole thing isn't falling apart. It's like maintaining its shape, especially the fresh lady finger, the like sponge cake it uses. So I've done it. I've ate exactly like Marilyn Monroe for a week. Historically accurate recipes, things that she herself ate grocery list. I did all of the research. 
I think um, her portions were probably way smaller. Okay, obviously she would not do a whole mukbang, but I do feel like I was eating a little bit more than she would, not just because I'm heavier than her, uh, different BMI, but just because I think I was overeating because it's 2021 and it's not 1950. And I think that as an American society, we are taught to overeat portion sizes. I would say it's a good diet to follow. It's just a little too carb heavy. And also there's like not a lot of flavor to it. I felt like, especially um, American food before Julia Child, this French chef who came to America is so bland. And a couple things she ate was good, but for the most part, it was just a very repetitive, not a lot of either spices or world cuisine or French technique, none of that. It was just very like baked potato, steak, cottage cheese, great. In terms of maintaining a healthy lifestyle and a more trim figure, she's got it down right. She's eating much smaller portions. She is indulging every once in a while. The only difference of when I did the whole, you know, week of eating like Marilyn, I just felt like my lifestyle right now, I'm not constantly on the go. I'm always home. Hi, it's a pandemic. I love to cook. Marilyn didn't really know how to cook. She also wasn't the best cook. Um, she, you know, didn't really know her way around the kitchen. She didn't grow up in a kitchen like that. And I felt like for me, all of her food was like, if she was super busy and had to run out the door and go to a modeling thing or go to an interview or go to a movie thing, I didn't, you know, that's, that's not my life. I feel like I've done a dent on this. Um, yeah, I really can't eat anymore. I feel extremely gluttonous um, in kind of a bad and good way. If there's another old Hollywood celebrity or restaurant you want me to do a mukbang for, let me know in the comments down below. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification so you don't miss a video.